a member of the DATC media family. This is Dropped Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Humphreys McGee. Each episode will feature a rotating schedule of insightful show recaps, interviews with members of Team UM, as well as musicians who have been inspired by the band. This is your place for the latest news and happenings in the world of Humphreys McGee, keeping you informed on what's going on or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah J. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this week of Dropped Among This Crowd. I'm your host, Sarah J. I hope that you were able to check out the last fresh episode where we got into the recent Florida run, April 12th at Vinyl Music Hall in Pensacola. April 13th at Janus Live in St. Petersburg, April 14th at the House of Blues in Orlando, and April 15th at Miami Beach Band Shell in Miami Beach. There is a link in the show notes where you can give that a listen if you missed it. This week on the show, we're going to chat about the April 19th show at JJ's Live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. April 21st at the House of Blues in Houston, Texas, and April 22nd at the House of Blues in Dallas, Texas. Before we get into that, got a bit of news for you. Final call for pre-orders for the winter-spring issue of Crooked Conversations. I am doing the final read-through of that finishing touches on things, and those are going to be going to print super soon. I wanted them to go to print earlier in the month, like last weekend, but my son, Brendan, had a stomach bug, so that kind of derailed things a little bit, but they're going to be going to print super soon. So this is your final call to get those pre-orders in. There's not a lot of overstock when I put my order in for those. So if you're wanting one, get on it now. You can head to datcmediacompany.com to pre-order yours and to get a peek at the content that's inside. Or if you're interested in a subscription, head to patreon.com slash datcmediacompany And you can check out the different tier options and see which way you would like to get Crooked Conversations, either in the digital format or in the physical magazine form, or both, whatever tickles your fancy. And there's a lot of really awesome stuff coming over on Patreon. I'm still discovering and learning all sorts of different cool things that I can do over there. And I've got some very awesome things in the works for my amazing Patreon supporters. I want to give a quick shout out to Mitch and Joshua for their very generous monthly contribution. Um, So check it out, patreon.com slash DATC Media Company or DATC Media Company dot com. Head to the store page and grab your pre-order of the winter-spring issue of Crooked Conversations. 46 full-color pages of Umphrey's content. Um, I just love this piece of the media company. And actually, this past weekend's Wrapped Around, I had a copy of the Umbel issue that I kind of flipped through. So if you're kind of curious about what it looks like, check that out over on YouTube and you can see what it actually is. Maybe you saw my post on social media. I am doing a little fundraiser. Jake signed some Jake Blade t-shirts last weekend in Birmingham, Alabama, and I decided to take those shirts and raise some money for the Roadie Clinic a nonprofit organization that exists to empower and heal roadies and their families by providing services and resources tailored to the struggles of the touring 
lifestyle. And they're based out of Niles, Michigan, Jake's hometown. So it only seemed fitting. Um, So check out my Instagram or Facebook page, Sarah Jahimiak, if you're not already following me on there, for more details on how you can snag a signed t-shirt. And those designs by Rough Gage are actually, they're not going to have any more of those t-shirts. I think that's the very last of their inventory. They have some new shirts being released really soon. So that makes those even more special. The older design, Jake signing them, and the money goes to a really, really good cause. So check it out on my personal Instagram or Facebook page. And check out the Roadie Clinic. They're also on social media. Um, They post a lot of really great stuff and talk more about the way that they've been able to help roadies and their families. Really great organization, so check them out as well. On to some Umphreys news, another show announcement, All In Fest, September 9th and 10th at Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis, Indiana. Umphreys will be playing a Led Zeppelin dream set featuring Jason Bonham. You may recall back in 2019, in June of 2019, they did a set with Jason Bonham. And they also brought out James Dillon, who is the lead singer of Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Experience. I highly recommend checking out that set. My first time at Red Rocks, so I mean, hell of a way to (laughs) Red Rocks for the first time, right? Other bands at All In Fest, Trey and Classic Tab. Joe Russo is Almost Dead, Corey Wong, Andy Frasco, Green Sky Bluegrass, and more. Tickets went on sale, I believe, May 5th. And any information that you need, links in the show notes. Another date on the band's calendar, but not officially announced yet. August 24th in Huntsville, Alabama at VBC Mars Music Hall. No other information on that yet. I did also peek around at the venue's website and didn't even see anything on there either. So save the date. It's the day before the two nights in Asheville. Um, I'm sure an official announcement will be coming soon. Um, but it's it's on the website, so it's interesting that they kind of snuck that on there after this recent show in Alabama. But August 24th in Huntsville, Alabama. Stay tuned for more. Also recently announced, Eggy has been added as supporting act for the August 18th show at Pier 6 Pavilion in Baltimore, Maryland. I have not had a chance to check them out yet. I'm hoping this summer I will be able to. I'm sure I will um, with the shows and festivals I have on my calendar. Also announced, coming soon, Frame by Frame, a rockumentary celebrating 25 years of music, worked on by the amazing Pete Herzog. He was actually a guest here on the show, episode 165, him and his amazing wife, Stephanie. Such a creative duo. I don't know if you remember the new, I think it was the New Wings house where you would have to I spy all the different things in all the rooms. That was created by Pete Herzog. I recall him being live on YouTube with Kevin talking about that. Uh, Maybe you remember back during the pandemic when Umphreys released the doodles, the dry erase doodles. Um, that was also Pete Herzog. He's done a VR poster, the one year for Red Rocks. The year is completely escaping my mind right now, but there was the one year for Red Rocks when it was the typewriter and then it had like the Rocktopus tentacles coming out of it and you downloaded the app on your phone and it did like the VR thing. That was also Pete Herzog. So he's worked on a bunch of different things. Um, I highly suggest you check out the episode I did with him. Again, that was episode 165. He talks about all of the interesting projects that he's worked on with Umphreys. Um, and he he 
works at an animation studio. So, I mean, this guy is so awesome. And like I said, so is his wife, Stephanie. I finally got to meet them for the first time in person at Umble this past year. And that was really great. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for frame by frame release date for that and where you can watch will be coming soon. And finally, in the news section of this episode, Summer Camp Music Festival is just around the corner. Crazy to think that it's already almost here and it's so great that it is because it's the official kickoff for summer, at least for me. And announced on April 27th, on par with the old summer camp model, Umphreys will be joining Mo on the Moonshine stage. I remember seeing them on that stage at my first summer camp back in 2008. It was actually my second and third Umphrey show. And I just remember being in the grass. I think it would have been Saturday night. and just laying there and just letting the Umphrey's vibes, you know, wash over me. And I left that weekend just all in with Umphrey's. I went there to see Mo because at that point in my life, I was a big Mo fan. I was seeing a lot of Mo, you know, living in the Western New York area. It's very easy to see a lot of Mo. And I left so enthralled in Umphreys, and from then on, like, that was it. I was so into it, and that year was my first uh, New Year's, and, you know, that was it. So it's going to be really cool to see them on uh, the Moonshine stage again. The schedule for the weekend was also announced Umphreys will be playing first on Friday afternoon from 1.30 to 3 p.m. And then Saturday night from 10 to 12 a.m., they will be playing a set with Mo, which, I mean, come on. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. And it's going to be a nice taste of what is to come the following month at Red Rocks, which I am also very excited for that. And then Umphreys will play Saturday night from 12.30 a.m. to 2 a.m. That's going to be pretty epic. And Sunday evening, they will close out the Moonshine stage with two sets, 10 p.m. to 11.15, and then 12.30 to 2 a.m. So, yeah, I'm not mad about this change of time frame for them. And I'm also not mad at all about the change in location. I feel like the past couple of years, the stage that Umphreys was playing on, I can't remember the name of (laughs) all the stages, but it felt like it was just getting further and further away and it took forever to like walk over there and everything. So I'm really happy that they're going to be playing on Moonshine. You can find the full schedule on the Summer Camp Music Festival website or their social media pages. And then I'll also throw a link in the show notes for all of the information that you need for summer camp. And if you are going, I will hopefully see you there. Um, If you see me wandering around the grounds, don't hesitate to come up and say hey. All right, let's get to some music. April 19th at JJ's Live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Some fun facts. They haven't played in Arkansas since 2019 and haven't played in the city of Fayetteville since April 15th, 2015. This was also the first time that they ever played at this venue. This show went on the list I have for Shows of the Year contenders. Definitely a heater from front to back. And, you know, that's just how Umphreys apparently does a Wednesday night. And, you know, this is a prime example of why you should listen to every show. I mean, you should listen to every show anyways. (laughs) But this is one of those shows that when it comes time for Hall of Fame voting, people always tend to gravitate toward the big shows. 
New Year's, summer camp. This year would be the birthday shows, um, Red Rocks, you know, big events where obviously there's going to be moments from those shows that are stellar and probably do deserve to be voted for for Hall of Fame. But a lot of times shows like this one on a random Wednesday night in April in Arkansas are overlooked and there were so many highlights in this show and we're going to get into one in particular that definitely made its way to my Hall of Fame contenders list already. You know, you just need to listen to everything because you don't know where there's going to be some hidden gold for sure. This is a prime example of that. And I'm sure I'm going to say it a couple times as I get into this. Highly recommend giving this show a spin if you haven't. Set one would open with the walkout tune Bathing Digits, sliding right into I Don't Know What I Want. Very nicely stretching and warming everyone up for the evening ahead. Pretty much the rest of this first set you'll find on my highlights list, which there's a link for in the show notes. First up, the next tune, Malshay's Odyssey. We really get into it about five minutes with a nice mixture of sensuality and aggressiveness strutting off. That right there as it heads out is what I really like about Umphreys. This would get increasingly grimy as it continued, falling all away and pulling back in preparation for its drive full steam ahead back into Malchais. Example one next. The last time we saw this was last year on February 12th at the House of Blues in Boston. Completely lost my voice that weekend. And I can't even remember the last time that happened. And I also finally got my roulette that weekend. That was a really good weekend. (laughs) Phil's Farm next, also on my highlights list. Abandoning Phil's after three minutes, dancing off quite gleefully, opening way up as it reached for the stratosphere hitting a nice peak after seven minutes and very nicely coming back down to sea level, falling all apart, quickly piecing back together and sauntering back into fills. It's Not Your Fault next, followed by Paget's Profile. Dusted this one off, last time played November 20th, 2021 at the Norva in Norfolk, Virginia. And actually, The guy that that song was written about, Brett Padgett, was recently a guest on Stew on This with Rob Turner and Carl Engelman. Highly recommend giving that episode a listen. Very interesting conversation, and Brett has been around since the very beginning, since before there was an Alibaba's Tahini. So you definitely want to listen to that very interesting conversation. I mean, I think you should check out all the episodes due on this because Rob and Carl are just an amazing dynamic duo. But definitely check out this conversation with Brett. He's definitely an interesting dude. You can find Stu on this anywhere you podcast. And of course, link in the show notes. This first set in Arkansas, closing with an absolute fire. Got your milk right here. Immediately went over to my highlights list. And this is what I said a few minutes ago. Went right over to the Hall of Fame contenders list. Full of authority charging off after three minutes. Falling deeper down the rabbit hole as it continues. Coming out the other side about six minutes later completely engulfing us all in as it opens up and whisks us off, totally making you lose sense of time and space. And I imagine anyone in attendance would agree to feeling this soul elevation during this back half of the jam. I personally love everything about jams like this. 
just washing over you, not a single care about anything in the entire world. Like, there's just not a single worry in your mind. So much bliss and so much energy vibrating in the room and coming from the band. Just all of it. And even the way they landed it very nicely back on Earth, just, oh, so good. I love this milk so much. I mean, I love Got Your Milk anyways, and a lot of times we don't see any expansion from it. But this, they really allowed it to expand, and it was so good. I've listened to it a bunch of times. Definitely getting a vote when it's time to do 2023 Hall of Fame. So if you listen to anything from this show, and again, highly recommend listening to this entire show from front to back. But if you listen to only one thing, if you start in one spot first, this milk for sure. So here for milk just spilling over and expanding like this. I just can't talk enough about it. It is so, so good. Set two this evening would open with the Fussy Dutchman. The rest of this set would reveal itself as an all-in-time sandwich, adventuring off on its own about three minutes. About a minute later, Elements of the Jam took me back to that January 28th, 2022 Mantis in Detroit. This had more pep in its step than that jam, but there were some elements and moments to this when it made its way out that made me like perk up and go, hmm, instantly made me go back to that 2022 Mantis. Interesting for sure. We leave all in time completely in the rear view for now and instead head into deeper. The last time this was played was last September at Red Butte Garden in Salt Lake City. This gets really sexy about five minutes, rounding the corner and slipping into something a little more determined about three minutes later, opening itself way up and completely letting loose, bursting through and cooling its heels as it makes its way out the door, beginning to construct the pieces of the next tune out of order together. A very nice sandwich would follow. Utopian fur into girlfriend is better. Back into utopian fur. Girlfriend is better, originally by the Talking Heads, can be found on their 1984 Stop Making Sense album. The last time Umphreys played this was February 27th, 2020 at McDonald Theater in Eugene, Oregon, now covered a total of 30 times. Talking Heads are one of those bands that, in my opinion, is really perfect for Umphreys to cover. Sure, I've said this on the show before. They do such an amazing job paying homage to the original song and artist but then they open it up and take the space to really put their signature on it but when you're covering an artist like the talking heads it's not really hard to do and Bayless's voice is so great singing talking head songs they're just you know the police which we'll get into in a little bit. Another band I've said multiple times is just really great for Umphreys to cover. But Talking Heads, they just, they nail it every single solitary time. The meat of the Utopian Fur would come in the second half after they allowed Girlfriend is Better to really wander and expand. I did throw that Girlfriend is Better on my highlights list. They just did just so good with that. I didn't put the whole sandwich on, um, but That Girlfriend is Better is definitely on the highlights list. Uncommon and the conclusion of All in Time would bring this second set to a close. And Encore, the silent type, on the original set list, it said August into Den for the Encore. 
Not to hate on the silent type, but I'll be honest, I would have preferred to hear August into Den instead. Honestly, I'm sure that it was probably the sake of time as why they, you know, called an audible and put the silent type on there instead. Silent type was actually originally placed after Milk to end the first set. And I will say, I think it was a really smart choice to cut it there. Ending that first set with that fire milk was perfect. I'm sure, you know, time again, the way that they allowed that milk to expand. So they probably cut it for that reason mostly. But just vibe wise, like now on this side of it, in hindsight, looking at it, it was a really good choice because the way everybody went into set break after that milk was just so high vibe and so high energy. Um, so it was a good call to cut it from there. I can see where they put it in the in the encore position this evening. Up next, April 20th at Stubbs in Austin. This show was sadly canceled because of weather. Very unfortunate anyway. Of course, it's always a bummer when that happens. But this was already a makeup show, <laughs> and they haven't played in Austin since 2018 or at Stubbs since for 2017. So I know a couple people that were there, and they are definitely feeling a little defeated by it. And a couple people had remarked to me that the venue shouldn't have canceled it, that it really wasn't raining that bad. And the you know the bad rain didn't come until later and you know so who knows why it was actually called you know what is the deciding factor for venues like that um but yeah it's it's a bummer of course but you know you got to do what you got to do the band said that refund information for that will be coming so i'm assuming if you haven't heard anything about a refund yet reach out to the point of sale they're going to be able to help you more with getting your refunds. I asked Joel on Twitter what the set list was supposed to look like for this evening. His response was, we played the Austin set list last night in Houston, with the exception that Dwayne Trucks was going to sit in for Sweet Leaf into Jessica instead of Lanier into Puppet. And then we would actually see that Jessica cover later on over the weekend, unfortunately, without Dwayne Trucks. Hey, Carl, guess what? What, man? Not only is there a Patreon for Dropped Among This Crowd Media, which already is a great way to support, but for those who are getting cold feet and not sure, there's now a 14-day trial. You can see some of the benefits that you get at the Oh, Patreon. shut the front door. Some conversations that you don't get on the show. Will and I are about to record a football one. Actually, Carl and I are uh, recording longer and longer interviews. I don't know if they're all going to make the podcast. Mm. But you will always be able to find the full version of the interview. It's a good problem to have. On Patreon, yes. We've, talk we've been talking to some talkers. Yeah, that's for sure. But, you know, there's going to be more more and more content, more and more benefit, and gosh dang, it just helps Sarah create more podcasts. There's so many things on the back burner. And Sherman will be with us every day, right Sherman? Sherman's nibbling on my knee right now. I miss my birdie. <laughs> and as always, thank you Sarah. Hey Rob. What's up Carl? Guess what time it is. Time for another season of Star on this. That's right. You guessed it. How'd you guess it? <laughs> I don't know, but You're I'm so smart. We just did our first three interviews and they were lengthy. I can't wait to share them with the audience. We're not afraid to go deep. Uh, we're going to jump into Juniper Tree. We're going to jump into, what was Joel's band's name again? Something Bob. Right? Something Stomper about Bob. Bob. Stomper, Stomper Bob. Stomper Bob. We're going to go back in time and we're also going to... Tashi gonna... Station. But we're also going to talk to people like Daniel Donato and Michael Palmasano and, and other folks and Carl's going to make more mystery songs and we're gonna he's going to make dishes that relate to the guests. We might even talk about Bigfoot and aliens. Who knows? A lot of food, a lot of conspiracies, a lot of sports, and a whole lot of bullshit. Just, Tune in. Just natural conversation. Nothing forced, nothing scripted. Just real. Real life. Indeed. 
Moving along, April 21st at the House of Blues in Houston, Texas. The last time they played in the city of Houston and at this venue was back on April 20th, 2016. They've now played at the House of Blues in Houston five times. This first set would open with the walkout tune, You Got the Wrong Guy, sliding right into 40s. And while 40s isn't my most favorite song, I do love how, whether it's in kind of the warm-up position at the beginning of the set or a finisher in the encore position, it works. (laughs) It works in whatever way that they are intending for it to work in that show, you know? Speak Up Next, abandoning its roots slightly before five minutes. Stasic leading the way as we head into the jam, dancing on confidently for a little bit, rounding the corner about a minute and a half later, and embracing something a little more tender, but only for a short time before really gathering momentum, getting itself all worked up, calming its ass down, dancing off on a more even level, bringing it closer to the hip as it makes its way out the door working itself up a bit one more time before dissipating. Cemetery Walk would reveal itself next, followed by Pure Saturation. Cut the cable after that, heading into the jam very early on after less than a minute. Legit wasting not a single second, getting right into it. This one really stretches its legs nicely. And I'm surprised that All Things Umphreys did not mention the 1348 tees that ominously crept in slightly after five minutes. And I've said it many times how much of a banger this tune is. And with expansion like this, it only solidifies that in my eyes. And when it comes back to cut the cable, That guitar riff just brings so much joy to my heart. I can't help just smiling so hard every time I hear it. And I've heard Cut the Cable so many times. It just doesn't matter. It just fills my body with so much happiness. I don't know what it is. Just so good. Obviously, I'm sure it's no surprise that you'll find this on my highlights list. And, you know, Cut the Cable is one of those tunes that I would choose of theirs to play on the radio. I mean, I don't love the radio, and anytime I'm in the car, I don't listen to it. But if I had to choose a song that I think would be just absolutely ripping for radio play, Cut the Cable would make that list for sure. The Lanier next. This one goes on a very nice adventure, about five and a half. Can never go wrong with the Lanier. And closing out the first set with a standalone puppet string. That section right there, as I said before we got into this show, um, that Lanier puppet is what was in place of the Sweet Leaf Jessica that they were going to play at Stubbs. Set two opened very dramatically and matter-of-factly with a nice 15-minute hurt bird bath. A cover of Driven to Tears Next, now played 26 times, last covered August 15th, 2021 in Des Moines, Iowa. Driven to Tears can be found on the police's 1980 Ugh, A Music War album. Again, as I've said, Many times, I just said it earlier in this episode, The Police are another great band for Umphreys to cover. They do a phenomenal job of paying tribute to the original artist and, again, allow the space to make it their own, put their own stamp on it. And, again, just like the Talking Heads, The Police are another band that, even though the jam... When you're listening to it, you're like, this is definitely Umphreys. This is is them, you know, putting their little secret sauce in it. But at the same time, you're kind of like, but if the police were to jam this song live, 
it's not very off base of what that would sound like, which is what I also love about it. And if you have never listened to the 2019 Halloween show where they dressed as cops and played a bunch of police tunes peppered in throughout the evening, opened with Synchronicity 2 was the first time they ever played it. I just love when they play that song. Um, Do yourself a favor and listen to that October 31st, 2019 in Washington, D.C. You will not be disappointed, I promise. So good. Second Self next, followed by a scapegoat detaching and wandering into space slightly before five and a half, enjoying a nice interstellar dance around the planets. Out of Focus would follow, now played seven times since its humble debut, and lacing up our dancing shoes one last time this evening with a second set ending Cemetery Walk 2, falling down the rabbit hole slightly after three minutes, Coming out the other side and dancing back into Chem Walk 2 six minutes later. And encore this evening, one tune, Rocktopus. Last seen earlier in the year, January 13th at 930 Club in Washington, D.C. I tell you, Carl, there's a lot of people out there who have either band or, or they have a business or they're an artist and they're, mm-hmm. you know, they're looking to reach this music-loving, traveling music fan mm-hmm. kind of world, which can be elusive. Yes, they're dreamers. Yes, like-minded people. What better way than through Dropped Among This Crowd? If you, wanna, if you, wanna, if you have a podcast you want to create, mm-hmm. Sarah can provide a platform. She can, pl- she can provide um, promotion on social media. She can provide an engineer. Um, or if you want to advertise, or if you have any big idea, particularly with the artists, mm-hmm. you want to email Sarah at DA tcmediacompany.com She can provide, again, a platform for your podcast, social media promotion. Uh, she can even provide an engineer. Because, folks, you know, you want to reach fellow Humphreys fans or jam fans or music industry people or musicians or just people who love music and travel for it or, as in the case of Stu on this, mm-hmm. foodies. Mm-hmm. Music-loving foodies. That's right. And if y'all need any help with recipes, you need to get a hold of me. Yeah, you need to get a call directly. But if you want stuff with promotion and social media savvy and a podcast platform, you want to email Sarah at DATCmediacompany.com. Sarah at DATCmediacompany.com. Correct. You want to know how to peel and cut an onion? You talk to me. That's Carl. You want to put out a podcast? You want to put out some material, some artistic expressions that, that you want to get paid for? You contact Sarah J. And if you have old cassettes that you don't know what to do with, you send them to me, Rob Turner. <laughs> Hey, this is Rob Turner. I hope you're enjoying this podcast on the Dropped Among This Crowd Media Network. But my friend Jimmy Knowledge and I also have a podcast on this network that we'd like you to listen to, don't we, Jimmy? It's called the Umphreys Wow Show. What we're doing, at least in this season, it, uh, we're perfectly willing to let the podcast evolve over the course of time. But season one, we're going through various old school Umphreys McGee songs and exploring them with comments from the band. And from the listeners, generally, we have a side A that's more of a general overview. And then we have a side B where Jimmy Knowledge signs even more than usual. Right, Jimmy? Tell them about side B. Side B is for the curious, the folks that have their scuba gear on and are diving deeper into the improv world and and uh, a lot of the the gooey goodness that happens in, in each of these songs. They, they all have a unique personality. And- we explore that. The best versions of the song, the, the uh, traces of where the song came from and the songs that came from improvisation out of these songs. And then we have the metal round with a guest from the Umphreys world. And they each, Jimmy, myself, and the guest pick their top three versions of said song. And then you, the listener, vote on them. And there is some waxing poetic. Not too much. Well... Maybe sometimes too much. But we appreciate if you give us a chance and listen. It's the Umphreys Wow Show on Dropped Among This Crowd Media. Thank you, Sarah.
And finally this week, April 22nd at the House of Blues in Dallas, Texas. The band hasn't played in Dallas or at the House of Blues since September 1st, 2018. And this would be the 11th time that they played at this venue. Set one would open with Get in the Van. We last saw this September 1st, 2022 in San Diego at the Observatory North Park. Push and Pull next. The last time that was played, July 10th, 2021, at the Caverns Outdoor Amphitheater in Pelham, Tennessee. And the ebb and flow of this evening's set list really made me think that Stasic was the one behind it. I don't know for sure, but that's just kind of my assumption based on the way that this ebbed and flowed throughout the evening. Anticipation building into the next tune, Jajunk. That's the first one from this night that would find a spot on my highlights list. Abandoning Jajunk proper and wandering off after three minutes, opening up more and more as it continued, getting some nice height, finding that nice pocket slightly after seven minutes, lifting off to greater heights than previously in the jam. Landing nicely back on earth and forging forward. We'd leave to junk in the rear view for now and instead head into Always October. I just love that tune. Standard version, no expansion from that one. The floor would very dramatically present itself next. And I just mentioned in the last episode two weeks ago when I chatted about the floor to run how I enjoyed the floor expanding its legs, and here we are again. Although the one in Pensacola would see a bit more expansion, clocking in at just under 15 minutes, while this one would come in at just under 12, we'd start to peel back the layers of the jam after four minutes, coming back so nicely into the floor just under five minutes later. Like I said, I'm here for when the floor wants to expand like that. Yes, please. New tune Staircase next. This would be the fourth time it has been played. And at the time of this episode's recording, we've seen it five times live. Ben recently shared a video on his Instagram of the video wall in Birmingham from during this song. And he wrote that he's been refining the cue stack to this new tune and now has a fully MA2 triggered video content built in as well. Ben said it's been a blast to create and edit song specific clips and dial in the transitions and color schemes. If you've seen this song played recently live, you know the awesome shit that he has been doing. Um, And if you haven't, check out that post, BP Factor, on Instagram. Birmingham was the first time I'd seen that song live, and that's where this video is from. And it's very cool, what he was doing with the video wall and stuff. Um, So again, if you haven't been able to check that song out live yet, Watch that video on his Instagram. It's very cool. And I just can't speak enough about how amazing Ben Factor is. Seriously. Slacker next, leading us to believe that we're going with one mindset when we head out into the jam, but instead embodying something a little more lighthearted and sensual as we dance out, gathering energy as it continues, gently placing it on earth and strutting off dabbling in some funkiness after eight minutes, starting to orbit and absorb some more energy, kind of ocularly deciding where to head next, pinpointing its next direction and heading there full of authority, finding its way back in slacker after 13 minutes, and the ending of Jajunk from earlier in the evening would close out the first set. Lacing up our dancing shoes with the first tune of the second set, Small Strides. Dump City next. This one you will also find on my highlights list. 
sinking its heels in after four minutes, beginning its journey to the outer reaches of the galaxy, hitting some nice heights throughout its adventure, the depths of this jam really giving the feeling of pure elevation and exploration, dropping back into Dump City slightly before nine and a half. And I'm going to stop for a second and apologize in advance for any dogs barking because it is like 70 degrees here in Buffalo today. And so everybody's dogs are outside. So sorry in advance. (laughs) Hiccup next, followed by two by two. This would embark on its adventure after seven minutes. Very delicately, it's first minutes out, falling down the rabbit hole. Remembering its abrasive side as it climbs out, slamming into the ending of two by two. Whoppy Sprayberry next, sliding into the jam about four and a half, steadily continuing on, opening up a few minutes later and embodying very hopeful energy, opening up even further and embracing a very nice, soaring, uplifting jam. One of those moments when you're just eyes closed, so blissed out. Love, love, love those jams. The bottom would fall out about 12 minutes and begin its creep back into Wappy. Kula and Divisions would round out this second set in Dallas. Very nice divisions. We got some perk world action in there, some breakdown with Chris. Um, Always love, always love divisions. Encore, Jessica. Last played April 4th, 2019 at the Belly Up in Aspen. Covered 59 times. Jessica can be found on the Allman Brothers 1973 Brothers and Sisters album. And if you remember earlier in the episode, I mentioned that Joel said that this was supposed to be played in Austin with Dwayne Trucks. Chris makes mention of that prior to going all into Jessica this evening. And like, how perfect is this song for them to cover? I just absolutely love when they cover this song. This would be on the very top of my list of songs that I would play for somebody that I'm trying to get into Umphreys. Somebody that, you know, knows of and likes the Almond Brothers. I would be like, oh, yeah, you want to hear Umphreys play Jessica? Okay. Like, it it would totally be a song that I would, you know, like, play for my mom or or something like that because it's, it's just so good. They just do such a perfect job with it. Seriously. All right. So that's everything I have for this week of the show. There are a bunch of links in the show notes for where you can check out the set list for these shows, where you can give them a listen, and for anything else I may have referenced throughout this episode. Also in the show notes, you'll find information for how you can support DATC Media on Patreon. Like I said at the top of the show, some very awesome stuff is in the works and going to be dropping over there for my amazing supporters. So definitely jump on that. There is already a bunch of awesome content that is not anywhere else. I post a lot on social media. I put stuff on YouTube. I share stuff over here on the show. But the stuff that I put on Patreon, you legit cannot see those pictures anywhere else. And when I do interviews with people, those episodes drop before they air to the public. So a bunch of other perks too. So check it out. Patreon.com slash DATC Media Company. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you around these parts next week. Mad love.